Working on three different Platinums at the same time was probably not the greatest idea I've ever had. Also, having a lot of work during that time and then becoming extremely ill to the point where my lungs are actually still affected today by this didn't help with any of the above. But here we are, it's actually been over a month since my last trophy. On the 4th of November is when I got Robocop and on the 20th of December is when I got the Platinum for today's video. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Also, yes, another Ubisoft game. In total, we are looking at just 32 trophies. 12 of them are bronze, 15 are silver, 4 of them of gold, and then, of course, the platinum trophy itself. Before we get into the first trophy and our journey into the world of Pandora, pressing both like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Being as there are only 32 trophy, this means there are very few main story related trophies. A little bit of backstory first, we are from a clan named Sarantu. We have been captured by the RDA and raised by them. Despite this, a lot of us reject the RDA, the most vocal being our sister. As a result, our sister is shot and killed. Some time passes and the RDA is now retreating. We are then put into what I believe is a stasis capsule, which will pull us to sleep until we are then awoken. Some more time passes and we finally wake up, but this time the RDA are back to take over. We manage to escape and we see Pandora for the first time. As you can see on the screen now, this game looks beautiful. Now we finally get to our first trophy. We have to complete a quest called Becoming. In this quest, we have to protect Alma and many survivors by stopping the RDA attack. This is where I was actually stuck for a good 15 minutes and not because I kept dying, but because I kept killing the enemies too quickly. They were coming in on these helicopters, but I was taking down the helicopters straight away, which sort of soft locked the game, being as there was no more helicopters that would spawn and I couldn't progress. So after restarting the game, I had to take my time and actually let the enemies come in. Eventually though, we finished all of this up to receive our first trophy called First Strike. After going through and then completing a few side quests and randomly collecting things while I am out exploring, I ended up at a crafting station where I crafted a weapon for the trophy Apprentice Crafter. At this point, I have something known as an Ikran, and this flying creature is what will be used to get across this vast open world. Using the Ikran, who I've named Fury, I collect some of the Ancestor skills. For unlocking a total of three, I receive the trophy Talk to the Ancestors. It's main mission time and for this one we are on a quest called Pushing Back. For this we use Fury to get on one of these floating devices which we take down. We then head to an RDA Hydro Oil Extractor, defeating it which causes the RDA to flee. After all this we talk to Kanat back at the home tree to get the trophy Aranje Alliance. Time for a bit more side quest now, this is due to me needing to be a certain level in order to easily complete the main missions. Leveling up in this game is different from other games, your level is determined on the weapons that you equip, the skills that you unlock and the armor that you wear. So while I was out side questing I collect some fruit for cooking and after randomly selecting things to cook together I unlocked 3 recipes for a specialty dishes for the trophy Cooking Pot Pro. So all the trophies that I've mentioned so far took me a week in total to do, pretty much due to me being ill. So once I finally started to get better, I went on getting the rest of the trophies. Five trophies while I was ill and in the space of three days, I got the remaining 27. To start things off, two days after the last trophy, I unlocked three skills in each skill tree, which gave me the trophy Becoming Navi. While I was traveling everywhere, I was making sure to use my senses to be able to scan things that are out in the wild. Doing this, I managed to unlock 30 Hunter's Guide entries for Gather All the Plants for the trophy Great Gatherer. Then after this I managed to unlock 20 Hunter's Guide entries for Gatherable Wildlife for the trophy Wildlife Expert. It was around this time I thought it would be best that regardless of my level it is time to just focus on the main story and get the game completed so I can start focusing on a lot of these collectible based trophies of which there are quite a few. Our next mainline quest is called Pushing Back and this we need to actually infiltrate an RDA facility. This one specifically is an extractor plant. We don't need to sneak in but I really don't want to fight against a lot of enemies before going inside the base and possibly having to fight a lot more. The stealthier the better. So after making my way in I attempt to stealthily take down the enemies and do everything that I can to destroy this place. This of course doesn't work and I ended up going in guns blazing. We eventually managed to take it down and we received this trophy stronger together. 
From here we go straight into another mainline quest, this quest called Revelations. Now I won't be talking too much about this quest as it's huge spoilers but let's just say you find out what actually happened to the Saratu clan. For completing this quest we received the trophy, Clearing the Mist. It's that time again where we have to take a little break just to go and destroy some RDA installations and outposts to level up a little bit. We managed to defeat a total of 10 RDA installations for the trophy little by little and then we managed to defeat 5 RDA outposts for the trophy hit them where it hurts. Ok now it's back to the main quest line, our next quest is called Rising Pressure. Here we have to destroy fuel barrels and generators at an RDA base then we finally have to defeat an RDA patrol before they find Priya. For doing this we receive the trophy Eco Warrior. It is now time to take on the final quest of the campaign, again I won't be talking too much about this quest purely because there is major spoilers for the story and is definitely worth experiencing for yourself. Ending this though we look out at the world of Pandora and for completing the main campaign we receive the trophy, our reclamation. Now with the campaign out the way it is time to start collecting and let me just say now one of these trophies I was about to start throwing hands. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. The first trophy though wasn't the reason as to why. All we had to do was to go and defeat a non-feral Thanator. Now this does take a little while to do as you have to go to a certain part of the world and then run around until you get sort of like a white border on your screen. This indicates that the Thanator is stalking you. The white border will keep increasing until the point of attack. For defeating the Thanator you receive the trophy, no easy prey. Now we get into sort of a collectible part of the game. For our next trophy we have to travel around the world and touch a total of 20 bounce springs. These are pretty easy to do, you will have gone past a lot of these as you are playing the game and by opening up the map you will just see them on there so you can easily mark them and head there. So for touching 20 of them we receive the trophy full bloom. And now another 20 things that we need to touch and this time they are called Tarshu saplings. Again just like Bow Springs by going onto the map you can easily locate these. And by touching 20 of them we receive the trophy Sprouting Potential. Ok so that was the last sort of collectible side of things done, this time we actually have to do the collectible parts. So let's just quickly make our way through these. First we collected all the windswept kites for the trophy tethered kites. We then collected all the windswept dolls for the trophy doll collector. We then collected all of the recon retrievals for the trophy data retriever. Then we collected 30 audio logs for a trophy called a good listener. And then finally we collected 30 notes for the trophy Story Guardian. After all of those collectibles I finally decided to unlock an Apex skill. This is an overall skill that you have the opportunity to unlock after unlocking all the skills under a skill tree. For unlocking an Apex skill we receive the trophy Peak Performance. Oh and we got another collectible, this time we collected all of the treasure hunt comics for the trophy Father and Stun in the stars. Now this next trophy doesn't really count towards a touchable collector or a normal collectible. For this we have to tune all of the alien, al whatever this word says, A-E-I-O-L-I-A-N, not a clue. Anyway, they're wind flutes, thankfully uh, with the help of Fury this was really quickly done and we received the trophy in harmony. After all of those collectibles I decided it was time that I help Pandora finally be clear of the RDA. By doing this we will help Pandora reach an air quality level of 100%. So I go through all of Pandora and destroy all the RDA facilities and outposts that still stand. Eventually I took down the last one and I received the trophy Reclaim Pandora. Did I say that all the collectibles were done? Well, I lied. Well, these are not actually really collectibles, just more interactions around the maps. This is something called the Saturn 2 Totem. We have to view these totems from a specific location. After in uh, interacting with the circle and some dialogue in each one, we finally complete all of the interactions for the trophy Vision of the Ancestors. Now, remember earlier when I said that I one of these trophies uh, made me want to throw hands? Well, this next trophy is right. Is the reason. Uh, on the surface it sounds pretty simple, all we have to do is complete 10 mycelium network activities. What this involves is finding this huge like mushroom and then following the small mushrooms on the ground to separate large mushrooms 
which you then just have to touch. It will then basically connect up with the large mushroom and then you're sorted. Now you may be thinking, why would you want to throw hands over this? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because there are only nine of these goddamn things. And for us to get the tenth one, we have to wait 24 hours. Now, when I saw 24 hours, I thought it meant in-game time because you can just go to a fireplace and rest. But no, this was real lifetime. Eventually, I managed to get this done by quickly disconnecting my internet from the PS5, changing the time and loading back into the game, but only after going 48 hours ahead instead of 24. I don't understand why they do this. They did this in Far Cry 6 as well, but Far Cry 6, you had to wait three weeks. Anyway. For Kai finally completing 10, we receive the trophy Mushroom Navigator. That was probably one of the worst trophies that I've done. Anyway, our next trophy was pretty easy as well. All we had to do was follow Blade Wing Moths to their nest and we received the trophy Fleet Footed. And now for the longest trophy. Between the last one and this one, it took me a total of six hours of just constant gaming. We have to complete part three of the Aranhei community, the Zeswa community, and the Kametaya community side quests. What these involve are contributing certain items to each of the clans. Now as you can see there are three parts to each one. In part one you donate three items, in part two you donate five, and in part three you donate seven. So in total you have to donate 15 times for each clan, and being as there are three clans this means there are 45 items in total. Now these items are things that I might have to craft, Sometimes it's food that I have to make, uh, but 90% uh, of the time these are just items that I need to go out and search for, collect and bring back. And that's probably why you can see it took 6 hours in total. Eventually though I made it through, got it all done and received the trophy one with the clans. Now after that extremely long side quest there is just one more trophy left which is also another side quest. Uh, this side quest is also in three parts but I actually did the first two while I was just playing. The side quest is called Steady Wings and it requires us to take a King Lord Queen to a new home. However you have to get there on foot, not get into any combat at all and basically you just have to walk otherwise it will stress the Queen out. Eventually we got the queen to the new nest, finishing the quest for the trophy King Lord Kara, and of course, getting the platinum trophy itself, Song of the Saren Tomb. If you enjoyed this video, pressing both like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. And if you made it this far, comment the trophy name in the description, no, no, description in the comment section below. And if you're looking for more platinum trophy videos, check out the ones that are on screen now.